Hey guys, Professor Prime here at MudgeonPlanet.com, and today I'm going to talk about The Last Dance. This is going to be a non-spoiler review. I did go see the movie on Thursday at 2 p.m. with Mr. J. If you guys are interested in us bringing back two fat guys at the movies, please let me know in the comments down below, because as of right now, it's a lot of extra work for me to do those podcasts, really. I just didn't feel like it was really going anywhere. I just want to focus on content that will actually do something for the channel versus just something that nobody watches. So for the, for the few fans that I did have, I do apologize, but I have shifted to doing the reviews myself in my own. So there you have it. So let's talk about on The Last Dance. As I mentioned, this is a non-spoiler review. I will not be spoiling any of the cameos. I will not spoil the ending or really talk too much about the plot. There wasn't a plot, but I digress. I will mention a couple of things. One, I did like the movie for the most part. I went into this movie with low expectations. I will say that it's probably probably my second favorite Sony film, Spider-Man, non without Spider-Man in the movie franchise film that they have done. I'm a little disappointed that this wasn't rated R. I feel like just, I don't know, I don't understand why I've said this, I think, all the way back when they did the first Venom film. I don't understand why they decided to make Venom to go the lethal protector route. And one, not follow anything from the comics, just everything in name and situations, like, and then not do Spider-Man whatsoever. I feel like if you want to do lethal protector, you should have at least, they could have done a lot of things to easily set up Spider-Man. Did like a why they could have done like this is how Venom and Spider Man became together in the opening credits they could have done that and then just like hey this is we all know the story of how Venom and becomes Venom we all know it here it is we're moving on that's what they should have done and they could have just made it a generic Spider Man it didn't have to be oh and it couldn't have to be like Andrew Garfield or Tom or Tom McGuire or Tom Holland or whoever. It could have just been some generic Spider-Man. It didn't matter. And then just move on from that. That way they have the spider powers. He could have done the web slinging. Had the spider. I think he would have had the spider. Explain the super strength. But instead they decided to not do that. And I don't know if they had planned. For what they did in this movie from the beginning. There are some hints in the movie that they did. I will say for the most part. The visuals were fine. I do feel like this movie had a bit more emotion to it. In terms of like what they were trying to accomplish, even though it wasn't done very well, I do agree that they were trying to do something with this movie. They didn't hit the mark with it, but they did a heck of a lot better than they did with Madame Web. 100% better than Madame Web. I do feel like this movie is slightly better than Let There Be Carnage. I hated Let There Be Carnage. For multiple reasons, which I will not get into in this video, because we will be here for three and a half hours. I want to not do a three and a half hour video about something that I despise and hate, because I just don't want to talk about it. That being said, I will say the music was was okay. Uh, I'm kind of disappointed that we just just no define Venom theme. I feel like every single great superhero movie or every great superhero franchise. Like, has a fun sound. Not just, just superheroes. Every great film has an iconic theme that, like, you just you hear that theme, you instantly think of that movie. But either way, Venom just never had a divine theme song that was like, Venom. Like, you, that's like, I feel like that's something that this franchise missed. I feel like, the, I feel like Eddie Brock, at the beginning of this movie, and at the end of this movie was in the exact same place in terms of like his development, where he is as a character, where he was in the beginning of the film. He wasn't as annoying as he was like in the second film and even in the first film. This movie should have been rated R. They all should have been rated R. And it's unfortunate that Craven the Hunter is going to be rated R. And I I don't know, we'll, we'll, when we get to that bridge, we'll cross that bridge and then I can kind of do the other Sony Spider, non-Spider-Man verse films that they've been doing but overall i would say that i really really venom was trash the whole franchise like if i was gonna do a retrospective of like how i felt like this franchise went there are so many things that they missed so many opportunities so many great moments 
Spider-Man fans could have had that they completely threw out the window because of some legal reason that Sony owns the film rights for Spider-Man, but because of a deal they made with Marvel to have Spider-Man in the MCU. Like, l listen, if, if anybody from Sony Entertainment even remotely sees this video, do you know how much money you guys made with Spider-Man No Way Home? Do you know why you made that money? Do you want to know why you made that much money? Because you just gave the fans what they wanted. This whole, like, who, uh, it's just stupid. Marvel owns the character. If Marvel wants to do this, let them do it. If you want to do this, you can do multiverse. You can have two different people play Spider-Man and do it two different ways, and you can do crossovers. Heck, you could even have, like, a new Spider-Man in these Venom films and interacting with Eddie Brock and did all the cool stories with Spider-Man and Venom the way y'all wanted it, but focused it on Venom instead of Spider-Man. And then you could have done like some team up in the Spider-Man 4, or even in Spider-Man No Way Home, had a fourth Spider-Man show up and be like, oh, I'm the Spider-Man from, you know, the universe. And, 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 and but there's so many things you could have done, but you failed. Sony, that being said, I overall like this movie for what it was. I think it's probably one of the better Sony films that they have done in recent time. That is not a very high bar. Do not take that as praise. This movie is just garbage. The second film was garbage. The first film was okay. The first film had moments that I was like, that's pretty damn cool. I do feel like, for the most part, Venom visually was finally done correctly. Even when they did other symbiotes, like in the first two films, they had she, she Venom, and you know, with introducing other symbiotes, and they had symbiotes in the first film, and then how they did Carnage. I felt Carnage, for the most part, visually was done correctly. Acting wise, character wise, story wise, it was trash, just like this film was trash. However, if I had to sit down and choose which Venom film I was going to watch again, I would probably watch this one over let there be carnage i'd probably watch the first one but i'd watch this one over the first one just because there were aspects of this movie that i did like just there was more of it just wish they had gone all in on it but they were too scared to whether for legal reasons budget reasons who knows all i can tell you that this movie was trash i'm going to give it a two out of five that's my rating. For those of you wondering, I gave Man and Web, I think we gave it a one, but my personal rating is a damn zero. That movie did nothing. It was terrible. You know, Venom, like, Let There Be Carnage was, like, also a for me. Like, the, the Venom film is kind of a two for me. I mean, I am a three, but I don't know. I just disappointed on how Venom was treated and just some of the aspects and things that I thought they were going to set up and even the things that they do set up. I know they're not going to go anywhere because of all the legal problems that they're going to have with Marvel and Sony. Seriously, just get your crap together. You both are going to make money. Just do 50-50. Like, whoever put the money down to make the movie, they should get the higher cut. Simple. So make Venom rated R. Put him in the MCU. Give him Spider-Man. Give him his spider powers like he used to have. Give me the correct Carnage. Give me Spider-Man and Venom versus Carnage. Give me Scream. Give me a real She-Venom. Give me, like, Toxin. Give me Legion Venom, for God's sakes. Do all of it. But do it in... Do it with the comic in mind how Marvel, for the most part, has done it. I'm not saying Marvel's perfect. They have missed the mark plenty of times when it comes to adapting the comics. They, I tell you anything that they adapted from these films, I can't. And I know a lot about the like, overall Venom storyline. I mean, things that they, they were cool, and then, then they just kind of together and wrote a story. So, yeah, this was a big fat F for me. I'm sorry, guys. I, I, I know Mr. J might disagree with me. He might say it was fine. He liked it. You know, entertained. I didn't feel like I wasted my money like I did with Borderlands or with Madam Web. Or with the Let There Be Carnage, I did feel like I wasted my money on those. Those I did buy the popcorn tin and the and the cup. Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. 
If you enjoyed watching this video, be sure to hit that like button down below and leave me a comment down below because that's help the algorithm know that you like this video. And if you want to see more, let me know. Check out the playlists and all that stuff and links and all that down in the description down below. And if you did enjoy watching this video, you can check out this video right here for more content. And as always, guys, until next time.